So the next person who's going to speak is someone who can really relate to what's going on in Anaheim and in Oakland. Please welcome Oscar Grant's uncle, Secret Johnson. Well, here we go again. I mean, this is good to see the solidarity here in Oakland with the family and the community in Anaheim. I mean, this is real important because this is what's going to bring about the change that we need. We not only need to just come to the rallies and protest, but we must become real visual in the fact that we are tired of seeing police murders in our community. As you know, on January 1st, 2009, Oscar Grant was murdered. Since his murder, there has been 10 plus families that have suffered the same experience. Romani Graham and them, the family there in New York, as you know, have recently got the police indicted for the murder of their son. The way they were able to do that was that the community continued to come out, speak loudly to the injustice, and show their anger also. So it behooves us as a community, uh, just like Oscar, the lessons learned from Oscar, had it not been for you, the community, speaking to that issue on that platform when Oscar was murdered, we would not even know who Oscar is today. It is because of you, the community, again, becoming our brother's keeper, because we are our brother's keeper, taking pictures. Whenever we see someone that's stopped by the police, stop. Take a moment out of your life to maybe save another life. Pull your cameras out and let them know. Just hold it in the air at a safe distance and say, I got my camera out. Treat that man right. There's an African proverb that goes like this. Until lions get historians, the hunter will always be the hero. And what that's telling us is that until we tell the story by the videos that we take in our community when the police officers kill one of us, no one will never know why that child was murdered. Their assumption will be that they was reaching for a gun, they were doing something that was allegedly wrong in violation of the law, and that gave the officer justification for shooting them in the back. We must address these issues when it comes to police murders. We must continue to speak loud. We must not only protest, but we must shut the city down. We must shut the city down. We must have sit-ins at the district attorney's office. We have to take more direct action, and that is shutting the city down. If another murder takes place, we need to let the city officials know that the community will shut the city down. It was historical for the Lone Shoremen to team with a family in the community when Oscar was murdered. We need to continue to talk to our working force, our working community and let them know that we need their support. Because if we can shut this city down, we will begin to get the, the type of control and the charges that we need filed against police officers to commit murder. So let not, let's not let this be the end of our outrage to what happened in Anaheim. Because what happened there, as you know, will and can happen here. So we must stand strong, let the powers at BC that this community is not going away, and wherever it happens across this nation, we will come out and stand in solidarity with that family and grow in numbers to where we can shut the city down. My name is Mike, and with the Coalition for Justice for Alan Bluford, uh, shortly, briefly, what happened to him on May the 6th, he was waiting for a ride on a street corner. The police rolled up with their lights off. They chased him. He had no weapon, he had no drugs, he had done nothing wrong. The police shot him three times and killed him, while the police officer also shot himself in the foot. And the police let him lay there until he bled out. So there's a lot of parallels between what happened to Alan Bluford and what happened to Manuel Diaz down in Anaheim. No gun, no reason to be shot, shot from behind, shot and killed, left on the ground, excuse me, left on the ground to die. So a lot of people talk about this like this is an epidemic. People use that language of an epidemic. And to me, I feel like that's not really accurate. An epidemic, like a disease that comes from nowhere, nobody knows how to treat it, 
Nobody knows where it came from. Nobody can trace it back to a source or a root. That's not what this is. What we're seeing on the streets of Anaheim, what we're seeing on the streets of East and West Oakland, is what the nature of policing has always been. Right? So this is not an epidemic. This is not something that just happened. This is all the slave catchers. That's where police come from. This is old as Jim Crow. This is as old as attacking the Black Panther Party or the Young Lords, right? This is as old as the drug war. And this is as old as what we see now on a weekly basis, young people getting shot dead from behind for no reason whatsoever. So the man that was killed on Saturday night, on Saturday in Anaheim, was named Manuel Diaz. Manuel Diaz, a young man from Anaheim who was shot, shot in the back of the head for no reason by the Anaheim police. The next day, another young man named Joel Acevedo was also killed in Anaheim. So, as you can see, I mean, the police out there are really out of control. And uh, Orange County is also where a homeless man was brutally beaten and murdered. He was actually a homeless white man. His name was Kelly Thomas. He was beaten. And, I mean, if you see the pictures of how he looked after he was beaten, it was horrible. I mean, it was really fucking horrible. So, it just shows you that Anaheim is just... Just Orange County in general just has a fucked, is a fucked up place. It has fucked up politics, period. What's up everyone, my name is Raphael from the Bay Area Revolution Club. No more, mic check, mic check. No more, no more. Understand that. With a dying culture, if 
if you want to change something in this system, you're going to have to get some help. Let me, let me tell you. They don't care on about no hundred people. We need to move thousands. And in order to do that, this is the direction we need to go in. If we know we're fragmented, how then do we best maximize our impact and our influence? Obviously, we unite. We find a way to unite our desperate forces. Because without that, you're just a joke. You know, they, they see, they laugh, slap each other on the back. You start putting five, ten thousand people together, they won't be laughing no more, let me tell you. And this can be done. It must be done. And it will be done if we're to win. So, what we're talking about here is a struggle that most people don't even understand. It's a struggle for principled unity. And that is to really understand what it is we're fighting, to be able to educate the public, and also to understand that there's only one class in the society that really can put an end to this. And it's not students, it's not people on the street. I'm talking about the working class. And that really matters. Because if you understand which class has the power, base your, your work on that class, you will begin to get some real results. Think about it. Thank you very much. I just felt I wanted to speak today because I wanted to remind us about the global picture. And even as we stand here and we feel this mix of rage and grief, I want us to remember that what's happening is the big occupation. It is the big clampdown. You see, over in Berkeley, the issues of the day you see Berkeley and the city of Berkeley and Albany want to get a tank for the Salado Stroll, they said. For Cal football games, wouldn't that be handy? You see, they're trying to make it a crime to sit down on a sidewalk. And over in San Francisco, oddly enough, they're trying to import New York's stop and frisk policy. What they're talking about, for anybody who's been to a, to a, 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 a third world country, whether it's military rule and checkpoints and soldiers on every corner. That is what's happening here. If you look at the, at the YouTube video of what happened in Anaheim, standing next to those cops are officers from the TSA. You remember the Transportation Security Agency, the folks that sexually molest you when you try to ride on an airplane. It's the federalization, it is the way that, that the federal government is putting resources, guns, armament, less lethal weapons, tanks, because they're preparing for this clampdown. And I'm almost, I'm glad that we're protesting because it gives us an opportunity to get together. But I think those of you who are here right now are leaders. And you're going to go back and you're going to tell folks what happened here tonight. And we need to begin to carry a message of self-governance. We need to work in communities to help develop a unity which empowers the residents to solve problems without the cops. It's a scary world. Come on, man. We got folks killing each other. We got folks committing crimes, stealing, blah, blah, blah. But we've got to get together. And we've got to understand who the real enemy is. We need to isolate the police and we need to make them obsolete so that when they come into our neighborhood, there is total unity. So that is an intruder. When we have that unity, then the solution can begin. So one of the reasons for this attack in, in Anaheim was that there, there has been for a long time, but more or less in the last 10 years, there's been this anti-immigration hysteria going on that Mexicans and Latino immigrants are bad 